Today we're going to talk about the Heathkit H8 digital computer. MITS announced the Altair 8800 in January 1975 and started selling kits soon after. Marketed to electronic hobbyists through trade magazines like Popular Electronics, the company founders felt there would be a limited appeal and expected to sell only a few hundred systems. Instead, they received orders for thousands in the first month. Sales were so much greater than expected that MITS was unable to clear the order backlog for the better part of a year. The Altair sparked off such intense interest in the microcomputer world that a number of other companies jumped in to fill the sales backlog building machines that were clones of the Altair. The primary component of the design was the S100 bus, so named because it used a 100-pin edge connector. Heathkit was a long-established player in the electronics market, making kits for products that have proven themselves in the market. In 1977, they decided to enter the microcomputer market and design the H8. The H8 is an Intel 8080 based microcomputer sold in kit form and started selling in the fall at the price of $379. The H8 was similar to other S100 bus computers of the era. The main difference between the H8 and S100 machines was the bus. The H8 used a 50 pin bus design that was smaller, more robust, and better engineered electrically. The machine also included a bootstrap ROM that made it easier to start up, including code for running basic input and output and allowing input through a front-mounted octal keypad and front panel display of the binary, um, instead of the binary switches and lights used on machines like the Altair. The H8 required a separate terminal to be truly useful. Uh, Heathkit introduced several terminals as well. Um, the successor model to this machine, the H8, was the Heathkit H89, which we'll demonstrate at a later time. Combined a Z80 processor board and a floppy disk drive into the cabinet of an H19 terminal. So I'm going to show you how this machine works. The first thing I'm going to do is switch it on. And as soon as it comes on, you'll see on this machine, it has a display showing both address and data register. And it has also some LED indicators that show you the status of the machine. Now what makes this machine different than some of the other machines that we've created videos for is that this machine has a keypad with what you're going to do or how you interface with it. And it's an octal um, keypad. So what's interesting in this is that you can let it know what you want it to do by simply pushing in the different keys to say you want to load or you want to go start a program. You can do direct memory um, addressing. Um, which is different than some of the other machines that we're going to be demonstrating. So I'm going to be using a modern uh, MacBook Pro as my console for this. Um, I do have the uh, Heathkit console that came with this the terminal, but by using the MacBook Pro as my console, I'm able to uh, quickly upload software to this machine. Now the console is hooked up to a small Adreno board which um, is basically being used as a terminal and I'm connecting to the Adreno board and the Adreno board is being is connected to the Heathkit H8. I am using the Adreno and I wrote some custom software to basically create a simple menu interface so that I can easily demonstrate the various pieces of software um, for this machine. So I'm going to put in a question mark here. 
And that basically starts the uh, Adreno interface here. And I'll be using this for some of the other demos that I do as well. So what's interesting is that the software that I will be showing you is all in hex form. So the actual code is in hex. And what I've done is I've interfaced to the um, serial port on this machine, and there's actually a serial interface card. And what I've done is I've interfaced to that card to allow it to talk to the Adreno. And from the Adreno, I am connected to the uh, MacBook Pro running CoolTerm, which is a very small terminal emulation software. The, uh, the speed is at 1200 baud. Um, the serial card in here can go up to 9600, but it was not, it's not reliable at that higher speed. The 1200 baud works best. So to, um, to start off, there's two ways we can obviously enter in the program. The first way is we can do a direct entry to the keypad. So I can sit and load in the program by directly typing in to the keypad the program. The simplest program to start with is a program that is basically called H8 is up and running demo. And when you build the H8, um, and I'll show you later inside, when you build the H8, it has all the different cards in it that make this computer run. And each of the different cards you would build in hand solder and, and, and connect. And one of the things that you want to do is ensure that the machine is actually functioning before you actually start loading any additional programs and software. So I'm gonna start by loading the HA demo. And how I do this, and this is really nice, um, with this keypad in front, is there's a button called load. And as I mentioned in the intro, this has a small ROM bootloader. And what that ROM bootloader does is basically allow you to do one key press. And from the one key press, it now says, oh, I'm accepting uh, code, hex code coming in in order to do it. Now, I am sending in code. This could have been fed in through a paper tape reader, which is the uh, uh, H11 paper tape reader, which is actually something that most people would have bought because this did not have a disk drive. So you would have had to enter in programs either through the keypad right here or the optical program, or simply type it all in, which would take a long time. When you watch the videos for the Altair, the Altair is without the bootloader you actually have to code in enough lines of code to start the Altair so that it can actually accept input from the serial card. This is all done by us simply pushing the load button. So I'm gonna push the load button right now, and that tells the computer it's ready to start accepting input. From there, I'm gonna let my little Arduino interface take over, and what it will do is it will upload the program, HA is up, and I'm gonna hit seven, and it's uploading it right now, and you saw the display was changing as it was coming in, because it actually, as each line of hex code comes in, it updates where the address and what data is coming. Now, just to make this work, it's very simple, you just hit the go button, which is number four. And it's now displaying your H8 is up and running. And it beeps, your H8 is up and running. Now these um, displays, these uh, uh, lead segment displays are unable to do all the character pieces. So it is simply just there to show what it's doing, which is very cool. And that just lets you know that it is actually working. So I'm gonna reset it by powering it off and then powering it back on, and I'm gonna do another load this time. And what I'm gonna be loading this time is a simple little program of um, Hangman. So uh, this had a basic also for it, um, and uh, basic um, was written by Heathkit, 
And many programs were obviously written for BASIC. Uh, and BASIC was the biggest programming language at the time that everyone would use in order to write their programs. Now this Hangman demo is not uh, a BASIC program. It is a program that directly interfaces um, hex code directly to the machine written for the Intel 8080 microprocessor. So once again, just like I did before, I am going to uh, allow my Arduino to interface with it. The code, um, which I'll show on the screen, is a, a small example of what that H8, what the code looks like for the um, hex code that's there. So I'm gonna hit load again, which is that button there. And now this time, I am gonna hit number six, which is the demo. And as soon as I hit it, you saw right away, it starts loading it. Now this program is a little bit bigger. So it's actually showing the address and the data that's coming in for this program. And it's uploading this program in there at 1200 baud. It's connecting to it. So as soon as it gets done uploading the instruction to the machine, the machine will stop um, and then we'll be able to run Hangman uh, from this machine. These are really nice machines, these H8s, um, and they, uh, they, they had additional models that they came out with and people uh, made additional uh, improvements and connections to them, but they're really great machines. Okay, so here at the console, the system was just uploaded. Now I am going to go into terminal mode here. So now it is gonna echo anything that is coming out, display anything that's coming out from the serial port directly to the screen here. And I'm gonna hit go. And as soon as I hit go, it says right here, copyright 1977 by Heath Company, instructions for Hangman. And Hangman is now on the screen. So what I'm gonna do is say, do you want to add your own words to the list? And I am gonna say, no. Okay, letters guess, none. So let's, let's guess E. And hit enter. Okay, so it said the word is E. So there is an E in there. Let's guess R. I hit enter and it just started to draw the character, let's guess O. Oh, there is an E and an O. Hmm, let's guess M. Oh, there is an M there too. Let's guess S. Nope, let's guess I. No, let's guess N. No, let's guess, let's try another letter. Uh, let's try C. No, or a one leg is there. I'm running out of letters to choose here. Let's guess T. Oh, okay, so I have one letter there and stuff like that. So let's guess H. Uh, almost there. And what do you think the last one should be? Okay, let's try, uh, let's try, before I try one other one, let's try F. See what it does. So starting to draw the other leg, but we're not there, no feet yet. So let me draw, let's try D, and let's see if that's it. The word is method. I've won, right? And then it's gonna let you continue on to play the next game. And this is a great example of an ASCII game that was written for the Heathkit H8. I hope you've enjoyed this example of the Heathkit H8. It's a great machine. We work to restore this machine and it is part of the collection 
that we have at the museum. The Heathkit company is no longer in business. Uh, they were a fantastic company where people could buy all types of kits from computers to color TVs to radios. And they started in business by buying military surplus equipment and from military surplus equipment and parts, they figured out ways to sell kits from those various parts for electronic hobbyists to build machines. So this would have been a machine that one would have constructed themselves. They did not sell this machine assembled. You would have had to have assembled it yourself similar to some of the other machines that we've demonstrated. Well, I wanna thank you um, it's been a pleasure presenting the Heathkit HA.